to retire now. <laughs> and our table of elocution centerpiece today, Mr. Ryan Spearman from St. Louis, Missouri. Ryan, Ryan is, a, is a gifted songwriter, a gifted musician, a gifted instructor, and a wonderful, wonderful good guy, just like Cody. And uh, my name is Ernie Hill, and I'm a truck driver from Arkansas. And I saw this, uh, this thing. This seat was empty, so I thought, hey, you know, why not? You know, and somebody probably come after this guitar in a little while, but you know what? We're... This is a song by John Hartford. It's a story song and it's a quickie and then we're going to do originals all after that but I thought this might set the mood for it. Well, I would not be here if I hadn't been there and I wouldn't have been there if I hadn't just turned on Wednesday the 3rd on a late afternoon got to talking to George who works out in the back and only because he was getting off early to go meet a man at a Baker Street bookstore with a rare first edition of steamboats and cotton, a book that he never would have sought in the first place had he not been inspired by a fifth grade replacement school teacher in Kirkwood who was picked just at random by some guy on a school board who couldn't care less and she wouldn't have been working if not for her husband who'd moved two months prior to work in the office of a man that he met while they served in the army and only because they had served shared the same barracks an accident caused by a poorly made roster mixed up on the table of a sergeant from Denver who wouldn't have been in there had he not been a riding in the back of a car before he enlisted hit a cement truck and killed both his buddies but a backseat flew up there spared him from dying and only because of the fault of a worker who forgot to turn screws on a line up in detour cause he hollered at Sam who was hateful that morning hung over from drinking alone in a tavern because of a woman he wished he'd not married that he met long ago at a Jewish bar mitzvah for the son of a man who had moved there from Jersey who managed the drugstore that sold the prescription that cured up the sunburn he caught way last summer. <laughs> That's kind of what uh, we're aspiring to do. <laughs> and it's only noon, folks. <laughs> So I think we'll just go down the line and uh, we're right. going to talk a little bit. I'm going to introduce you, Ryan. All right. That was an extraordinary feat of memorization <laughs> and recitation. Gingo Biloba. It, it makes works a if good, you remember yeah, to take it. <laughs> makes a good segue into this one because this is a song. I am a songwriter, but I, I play a lot of music in a variety of capacities, so I tend to play a lot of instrumental music, play side as a sideman, play a lot of cover and folk tunes. So... It's only every once in a while that I end up in a songwriter-specific situation. And when I do, I like to sing this. This is one of my cheerful songs that I think you'll find very uplifting um, about a poor relationship and drug deals gone bad and stuff like that. Um, I wrote this one myself, and I may or may not remember the lyrics. So good on you, Ernie. Uh, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be a story story song session here so the story behind this song is that i had a friend of mine who was requesting that i try to write a song with a happy ending because i have the tendency to to write songs that are kind of dark and morbid like any good songwriter <laughs> got to write the sad ones and uh she challenged me to write a song with with a happy ending because she and her her man were looking to bring a child into the world and they wanted some sort of they wanted me to help them feel good about the world they were bringing the child into. So I wrote a really kind of, you know, desperate, regular old songwriter song with a, with a mildly happy ending. It's the best I could do. It's called Broken Wing. Side of the bed with the wrong man on the 
wrong side of town She got that railroad in her soul And her bills all in a row The broken wing keeps her on the ground Just a girl she turned her back on Wichita With her rusty luck and smokestacks in her eyes Old trouble followed fast She grew up hard, she grew up fast And the daylight always came as the surprise First she left her home She had to learn to turn Time she went to looking for some work to pay her for. She tried to room from town to town, but they all took money down. On a broken home, she never could afford. Will that just last too long? Mind gets sick, the sleep won't come, the body breaks, the heart turns trouble into Truth gets warped by stubborn years that just keep falling through the years. This broken wing will keep you on the ground. He locked and looked her in the eye. His talk was slick, his talk was sly. She'd seen a hundred guys just like him before. Had the ways he had the means he peddled hope and careless dreams and she was getting tired of sleeping out of doors he could get mean when he got high a blade might flash an evil eye He'd shout a curse throw a fist into the wall she took these nights for bad or worse she knew a blessing from a curse She knew just how cold it got Outside these walls The night just lasts too long The mind won't sleep Sleep won't come The body breaks The heart turns trouble into pain It's warped by stubborn tears that just keep falling through the years. This broken way will keep you on the ground. We're gonna do the happy part, I promise. One day he ventured out to score. We never saw him anymore. And she never did betray the reason why. She drained the mattress of his cash Sold the remnants of his stash Took the fastest train to Illinois She had a little boy that June Born in the dark of a new moon His mama's clean She treats him like a king She comes a-running when he calls Hopes to catch him when he falls, protect him from this world of broken wings. Tell us, tell us where that song came from, Ryan. Uh, well, I already did. I kind of gave the story uh, about a couple friends of mine who wanted to wanted me to write a happy song, a song with a happy ending, so that they could feel good about the world they're bringing their new baby into. Okay, so now I know that both of you and myself, you know, at times, and the songwriters who perform have encountered people that, that will hear something and say, hey man, write a song about that. You ought to write a song about oh, that. Yeah. So, so when, you, when the, you were approached, did you immediately sit down and just came to you lyric and melody, or did you, uh, were you able to, uh, Think about it and let tell us how tell us how it works to your mind, man. Well, when I was asked to write a, a happy song or at least a happy ending, I sat down, gave it a shot, and suddenly I was writing a tragic song about a runaway girl from a broken home getting caught up with a drug dealer, 
um, just to stay alive. So that's the short story of the process for me. I'll try to do one thing and it just goes the other way. I see. But I definitely wrapped it up in the last sentence at least. There's hey, a little. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I've, I've uh, listened to that song many times, you know, since I acquired that CD. And it, there's a line there that took the fastest train to Illinois. It just kind of sums it up, <laughs> you know. And we'll move on to Cody now. Yeah. Good morning. Most people where I come from take a fast train out of Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's a great song. I grew up in central Illinois in a, in a really small town. Thank you very much. And uh, we used to have these things called study halls all the time. I don't know if anybody had any study halls in high school. By the time I was a senior, I had six study halls, lunch, and gym. It was a really small town. And uh, for something to do one day in one of those study halls, because I had so much time on my hand, I started writing poetry. And for me, you know, sometimes, some people, the words come first, and then the music comes first. For me, the words were always first for me. And then uh, I started taking my poetry to this open mic, and I would read my poetry at the open mic. And one day, this really good-looking, long-haired, guy who was really buff and tan brought a guitar to the open mic the poetry open mic i said oh are we really gonna let this guy in here this is a poetry open mic what's happening i said are we really gonna let him play his guitar at this open mic and they let him and he was terrible his words were awful i didn't even get it it was just ooh la ooh la ooh la the whole time but all the girls started listening to him they didn't give me they didn't give a damn about my poetry at all you know all the stuff i poured my heart out into there all they could do was you know be all googly-eyed over this guy playing the guitar so i got one and and brought it to open mic the next week to the poetry open mic so this guitar has been helping me put my poetry into motion ever since and happy to be here thanks ernie for putting it together song about a song I'm not singing about drinking anymore it don't get me nowhere but the floor it makes me forget all the things that I regret so I'm not singing about drinking anymore And I'm not singing about fighting anymore It don't leave me nothing but sore My face always gets crunched for I can even throw a punch So I'm not singing about fighting anymore And I'm not singing about peace anymore It ain't like it'll stop the next war The hippies just want to dance No one else will give it a chance So I'm not singing about peace anymore And I'm not singing them curse words anymore No, I'm not cussing a storm up like before I keep them words hid Half my fans are kids So I'm not singing them curse words anymore Hey, I'm not singing this song anymore I'm gonna finish my drink Then I'm off to fight another war If I sing another verse, 
I swear I'll mm, curse So I'm not singing this song anymore Thank you, Cody. Well, that, that was a lyric first melody or uh yeah i came up with the idea like honestly i know like six kids in the audience right now uh-huh. and i had that idea i have another song about it too because i've had to clean up my act and my language over the years because all ages shows are my favorites but the kids can't come to the bars unfortunately unless they're accompanied by an adult we got to do something <laughs> about that <laughs> oh. I'm sure, I'm sure in some states. Actually, I could tell you this story later about how I met my wife and her daughter at the bar. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I feel like I grew, I grew up at Mope's Tavern at oh, my dad's yeah. side, but I, I think those Dean's times Corner have tab. changed. Like oh, back yeah. in the day, your it was a, brought you to the bar. That's yeah. just what you did. It was a musician's bar. It was fam- family-owned and operated. It was a yeah. grill, too, so kids could come in, but they didn't yeah. come in very often. Ah, oh, the yeah. good old days. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're wonderful, wonderful. Not the club, but the bar. So, right. you, uh, you know... You, you'll talk to people that tell you, hey, I write a song every day. I make myself write a song every day, uh, you know, or how do you approach what you're going to do? Does it, are you just rolling along and all of a sudden the word comes to you, the thought comes to you, or, or do you make yourself write every day? Um, no, I don't write every day. Uh, ideas are rolling every day, every moment. I okay. spend a lot of time driving in this business, so... Every t- everywhere I drive, I always see things and come up with ideas and kind of put them in my mental memory. And if they're good enough when I get home, they'll still be there. And I'll write them down and come up with something. But I don't really write every day. But, you know, some people do, and they can write a song a day, like Woody Guthrie. But mm-hmm. <laughs> for me, sometimes put the notebook away and go out and live life. And when you come back home, take it all, pour it all out. I see. How about you, Ryan? Um, uh, only recently did I have any kind of process at all, and back in the day, I feel like in my youth, I had so much free time, it was pretty easy to just be inspired, um, but as, as I grow older and more responsible, um, and as mortality starts becoming a reality, <laughs> I feel like there's less time to write, so all of a sudden... A little bit of process has kind of entered into my songwriting in the later years, but I've always just kind of written when when I, the spirit kind of struck. But in the later later years, I've tried to force it out because otherwise, I might only write a song a year or something like that. So I use I actually use the John Hartford method these days is my most common way of writing a song. Norman Blake tells a story about how he got into songwriting. He was inspired by John, and but he felt kind of self conscious about his songs he was writing, and he asked John for some advice and John said oh man writing a song is easy you just take a song you know you change the words and then you change the melody <laughs> and so and so Norman laughed about it just like we all just did and then kind of went away and then next day he thought about it and thought wait a minute well, that's a, that, that'd work and so actually literally that's how I write well, I, I co-write with my wife Kelly um, at least at least 50 60 percent of the songs I write these days are co-writes with Kelly and uh, that's how we write almost every one of them. Mm-hmm. Use the John Hartford, patented John Hartford method of, uh, it's kind of I call it a creative laundering. <laughs> because you can just kind of steal, but as you go, you're kind of wiping your tracks away. By the time you get to the end, you've got an original piece. If you don't, if you don't spill the beans, nobody knows <laughs> how easy it was. So yeah, if there is anybody out there that's actually looking for uh, tactical tips, there you go, John Hartford method. Tactical tips. So now actionable, and, yeah. Tactical songwriting tips that, right here. Now that is not to be confused that you could go down to Hobby Lobby and buy a print of the Mona Lisa, draw a mustache on it, and put your name at the bottom and say I painted this. <laughs> you know, that would be graffiti. No, that uh, throughout uh, my era of songwriting, you know, my mother wrote songs and uh, she played on television and. Uh, radio around Wichita, Kansas, back in the father knows best days, you know, in, in the 50s, and, and just as a hobby. But she made sure that kids, we all had instruments, and uh, we just kind of took off with it. Well, I like to say, having spent my first seven years in Kansas, that I gained perspective, because you could see forever, and there was no mystery. 
you know, I mean, you knew what was coming and who was coming, and in and, and time, you'd know how long it took him to get there, you know. So my dad uh, worked a boring aircraft there and uh, came out of the Korean War, didn't want to go back to the mountains where he grew up, be a coal miner, and there was an option. He got mad and quit, came home in a 64 Chevy pickup and built a camper on it, we went to California, and I was a migrant worker for about eight months and played with little kids I couldn't talk to, but we could get the game going, you know, and... Uh, Moved into Oklahoma in the hills, and that's where I grew up, and that's kind of where I got my imagination because I could no longer see forever. You know, I wondered what was on the other side of the mountain. And so, so stories and song, to me, just, uh, I guess, uh, maybe it came out of boredom for lack that my closest friends were miles away. You know, my best friends were horses and dogs and chickens and chiggers. I even named my ticks. <laughs> We'd have sessions. We called it Tick Talk. No. Uh, my mother did tell us as children that we could make millions of dollars in Nashville if we could write really wonderful songs and become stars, and that scared me to death because I didn't know what she meant, you know. But like Cody said, in high school, I noticed that certain things were attracted to guitars <laughs> and guitar players and uh, uh, began to uh, uh, increase that uh, practice just a little bit more. And uh, coming out of high school, <clears throat> there was a publishing company in Tulsa that uh, put out an audition for a country music songwriting workshop. You had to pay $100 just to audition. And back in those days, that was a lot of money. Well, I did it and I was accepted with about 20 other people. And uh, for six weeks, every night after work in Fort Smith, you know, at the baby food factory, I'd drive to Tulsa to the songwriters workshop. We'd look at a hit, we'd pick it apart, study it, and try to figure out what made it work. And then we were supposed to bring a hit that we wrote right along with it, you know, the next week. And at the end of it, we met with a, an ASCAP executive who told us all, you know, hey, you know, nice job. <laughs> so what I got out of it was this. And my wife's gonna kill me for playing it. And I wouldn't have played it, but it's kind of uh, how I summarize what happened to me in the workshop. This is my attempt at a country hit. It's just a verse and a chorus. And I try to do the falsetto in a basic thing, which is I have to go like, Whoa. Now listen for the key elements that would make this. I want you to sing this song to someone you love. There you lay on the bed Your hands on your head From too much dancing and too much drinking At the bar Well, the music was bad But you know, it just makes me glad because the words helped me get you this far You know that it's sleazy You know that it's wrong But you know that it sure makes a good country song That's a, kind of what I got out of it. Uh, I tend to take the what I call a cosmic approach to songwriting. Uh, what something comes through, if I catch it, you know, I catch it. If it's something that's already been done and I know it, and I realize I, that I've earwormed a perfect melody and I'll throw it back, or like Ryan and, and said, if I really like it, you know, I'll think about it and maybe it'll shake it around a little bit more and it'll come out a little different. And then I can say I wrote it. And, uh, and sometimes the words happen, sometimes it's a line, sometimes it's an expression, sometimes it's, it's an old time fiddle tune that pops through your head, you know, and that's kind of my approach to writing songs. I don't force it because I'm not making money at it, you know, uh, I do it because I love it and uh, I admire people that can make a living at it because it's a tough, tough world. And if you, if you look on YouTube these days, there's a lot of people doing it. So, Ryan. Thanks, Ernie. I don't know. I think Cody thanked Ernie, but I'd like to thank Ernie for putting this together. I think he asked me to do this quite a few months ago, and I said, yeah, sure. It sounds perfect. And then uh, about 10 minutes before it happened, I thought, hmm, I wonder what I should do. I wonder what I should sing. But he mentioned uh, wanting some story songs, and I actually... Most of the songs I write don't have a really clear narrative arc to them. They maybe they don't necessarily have a protagonist and a, and a story that you can follow from front to back like the last one I sang. Um, but I do have a couple of them in there, so I want to give you at least one more of those. 
and this one kind of harkens back to what I was talking about earlier about the creative laundering process in the world of folk music as some of you undoubtedly know um, it's kind of more of a, a communal socialist kind of approach where everybody kind of shares melodies and steals them from each other and re reuses them and reshapes them to their own purposes um, and so I really enjoy playing old fiddle tunes but one thing I love most about playing old time fiddle tunes is fi finding the old words that go along with them um, so one tune I'm particularly fond of is called Sugar in the Gourd um, and I could only find about one verse for the tune it was said uh, I was I met her on the road she was dancing on the board and the wind from her shoe knocked the sugar in the gourd sugar in the gourd sugar can't get it out the way to get sugar just to roll it on about so that's the only old traditional lyric to this uh, this tune I found so I wanted it to be a little more complete so I went ahead and wrote fleshed it out and wrote a bunch more verses and turned that into a story uh, so it turns out to be the story of a fiddler and a dancer falling in love for an evening. Sugar in the Gourd. You can sing along with this one if you want. The chorus is Sugar in the Gourd. Can't get it out. Way to get sugar just rolled on about. And then after that, it just says Sugar in the Gourd. Sugar in the Gourd. Sugar in the Gourd. So if you can catch that. Sugar in the gourd, sugar in the gourd, sugar in the gourd. She asked my name, I told a little lie. Shivered when she giggled with a sparkle in her eye. And grabbed my strings and asked for the chord. And the tune we played was Sugar in the Gourd, Sugar in the Gourd. Can't get it out. Way to get sugar, just to roll it on about. Sugar in the gourd, sugar in the gourd, sugar in the gourd. Till the morning was coming and the board was full of dew And I slipped and I swaggered as I fell from the board And broke up all the sugar when I landed on the gourd Sugar in the gourd, can't get it out Way to get sugar, just roll it on about Sugar in the gourd, sugar in the gourd Sugar in the gourd off the bed and I dream a little dream while I snickered and I snored and the girly in my dreams was the girly on the board and sugar in the gourd can't get it out way to get sugar just to roll it on about sugar in the gourd sugar in the gourd everybody now sugar in the gourd <laughs> I woke 
next day to the burning of the sun and grab my fiddle just to play a little tune and I played a little tune for the girl on the board as sweet as all the sugar that she left me in the gourd and sugar in the gourd can't get it out way to get the sugar just to roll it on about sugar in the gourd sugar in the gourd sugar in the gourd Sugar in the gar. <laughs> Love that old time fiddle. Y'all, a quick reminder, right after this event is our old time fiddle contest, and I think we're pretty close to maybe uh, 10 or so entries. Okay, we have room for four more old time fiddlers, and that's what you're going to hear, so stick around, please. Did you, you mention earlier where people can register if they want to register for Thank the... you, Ryan. Back of the tent is where you register. You'll see Laura waving her hands and Patty waving her hand, and... And there's that one-of-a-kind uh, handmade trophy plaque by Tom Burkhart. And we're going to move it on down to Cody. Cool. Uh, this is my third set this weekend, so I'm trying to play some stuff I haven't played yet. No repeat weekend. This is a song I wrote. Uh, I actually wrote this song. I left Denver one night about midnight after a show and drove 15 hours to my hometown of Delavan, Illinois, and I wrote this song on the way to keep me awake. And my, my dad had just passed away not that long before, so I wanted to write a song that could make the family smile. And we'll see if it works. It's the night before Christmas, and all through the bar, creatures were stirring with their mouths ajar. Back by the pool table, there arose such clatter as people gathered round to see what was the matter. It was the most impressive sight anybody ever saw. That is this side of the old Mackinac. See, Dad and I was putting on one heck of a show, cause we'd won 6,748 games of pool in a row. Well, the onlookers, they just couldn't believe their eyes. They were stepping to the table and dropping like flies. One by one, we's putting them to bed with visions of Jaeger bombs all in their heads. And they's handing us drinks and buying us dinner. We's giving them fits and taking no prisoners, just separating all the men from the boys down at the farmhouse bar and grill in Delavan. You guessed it. Illinois Me and Dad, well, we do all right We drink for free when we're out Friday night The boys and the daddies give all that they have But nobody shoots pool like me and Dad Well, the clock struck midnight and there's a howling wind and these two roughnecks came stumbling in yeah one reeked of gas and the other of booze and they's covered in grease and leather and tattoos and they couldn't talk straight they's both just a mumbling they couldn't walk straight they's both just a stumbling Cussing and slurring up in everybody's face And Dad said, son, I think it's time we put these two drunken roughnecks In their place So they come up to us and start calling us names They said, hey, pretty boys, we got next game I said, it's closing time Yeah, we're packing up, but that'll be alright Go ahead and rack them up Cause they were slobbering drunk Sweaty and greasy and I looked at dad so this is gonna be easy So I give him a whack but nothing did fall It was a Dolly Parton break All bust and no balls and those roughnecks They stumbled down all over that table And they stood up straight like they's perfectly able Gave us a wink and they flexed their muscles And dad said son I think we're being hustled Grab the cues like a shotgun Leaned down and cocked it, took aim and fired into the corner pocket. Man, they's running the table. Yeah, we's getting spanked. They're pulling off six and seven rail banks, and there's nothing we could do. No use in trying. Dad and I knew it's all over but the crying. We suffered defeat, 
after winning so long. That's right, y'all, Dad and I finally got beat by my sister and my mom. Me and the family, yeah, we do all right. We drink for free when we're out Friday night. The kids and the families give all that they have. Nobody shoots pool like me, sis, mom, and dad. True story. True story. I love that. I love that expression in songs. True story. I mean, that's just pretty incredible. Just rambling things. I love how things ramble. You know what? Ryan and I were talking a couple of years ago about the songwriting process because I respect everything this man says. And I come to the conclusion that every, every note you ever hear in your life, you know, it rolls around your brain, it's registered there, every note and every melody and every lyric you ever hear in your life, you know, at some point when the mothership gets close, that instant recall is probably going to happen. They're going to say, well, we know what you've been doing. But when the tune comes out at the optimum time and nobody really knows what that optimum time is and I'll tell you, you know, in the process I noticed it's when the moon starts to get full and, and during that whole period my brain is so active my beard gets thicker I howl a little bit No, I don't sleep and, and honestly that's when ideas flow through my head if I'm working I gotta stop what I'm doing thank God for these recorders and the telephones you know, cause uh, just don't throw it in the fire like I did <laughs> The mothership has a cloud, I found out, and everything's stored in there. Even the pictures, I hope, that were deleted, they're, they're in there. I believe that with a lot of people who, who do not structure, who do not sit down with a notebook and say, I'm going to write a song, or who do not attend a workshop and are taught to, you know, to take a line and, and form it into something. The people who are walking along and can feel some energy drifting through, the, what I call the cosmic approach, and I think everyone has a different, I think every writer probably has a different, a different approach. But when these waves drift through, you know, and, and, uh, and boil around and steam, and sometimes you might trip on a rock or sit down in a comfortable chair and it's released. So you better get it or it's going to go on by. And, and you know, uh, Arlo Guthrie said it's like fishing. You know, you catch one, you like it, you keep it. You don't, you throw it back. And he said he just never wants to be fishing downstream from Bob Dylan. <laughs> Saw a ghost one time. Actually several times, that's a different story. But I was working in a boxcar, and it was dark in there, and I looked up, and I don't know, uh, this was back uh, in the 70s, and things were different in those times, I don't remember why, that's all I can tell you. But um, there was a kind of misty blue light floating around in one end of the boxcar, and it just disappeared about as quickly as it came there, I got all shuddery. And I got to thinking, you know, I, I, I've given a ride to hobos, and I've ridden trains, and it's, you know, it's just part of the stuff that's, that's fun in life, if you're careful about it. This is a tune I wrote, uh, and it just came to me as a story, and it's about a hobo. Hop on Chester. One night in a hobo jungle, it was dark and the air smelled like rain. There was 19 or 20 some hobos, and they was waiting around for the train. Some were laughing and gambling and drinking. Some were joking, making up tales. Some were sitting quietly thinking and just happy to not be in jail. Now there were old ones and young ones of all colors. A few women, mostly just men. And there were workers, immigrants, and fugitives. No telling just where all they've been But off to the side of the tracks were three men And one of them, he lay on the ground He had his ear to the rail He was a fading fast Waiting for that train to come around It was old Johnny one time and Oaky Joe But it was Chester who lay on the tracks And Oaky Joe, he took off his overcoat Stuffed it up underneath Chester's back Then Johnny knelt down into Chester's face And he whispered as he started to rain 
Said when you hear that steam whistle and you see that light coming, hop on Chester, maybe your train. Well, hop on Chester and ride up over the prairie and the Great Divide, where you'll never be hungry in jail or in pain. Hop on Chester, that be your train. Now, Uncle Joe said, Chester, when you feel the rail rumble, roll over here off the track. Cause that train's gonna stop and you won't have to jump. So hop on, Chester, and don't ever look back. Now you'll see quite a few of the old boys and the engineer. Well, that's Memphis Ben, and he'll be more than happy to have you on board. So, Chester, hop up and get in. Yeah, hop on Chester and ride Up over the prairies and the Great Divide Where you'll never be hungry in jail or in pain Hop on Chester, that be your train Well, I looked on as Chester lay dying And the lightning lit up his pain But old Johnny and Joe never quit trying to help Chester get on that ghost train Well, he rolled off the track and finally lay still He was smiling and his eyes opened wide I swear I saw Chester's spirit It was a misty blue light Step forward to take his last ride Hop on Chester and ride Up over the prairie and the great divide Where you'll never be hungry in jail or in Hop on, Chester, that be your train. Adiously. Thank you. Call to the fiddlers that are here for the contest to please step up to the table and approach Laura and draw for your order of appearance. I think we've got time for, for one more each. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to do a quick one then. I really, I really like that hobo song there, Ernie. Thank you. The, uh, the epic family billiard saga was pretty awesome too. Oh, okay. And I learned a little bit about about your rule book too. So no cursing, but innuendo is fine. <laughs> we can allude to, we just can't explicitly state. Which is more challenging. Yeah. Uh, this one, this song here is, uh, well, I call this my science fiction Christmas blues song. It's a new genre I created. <laughs> and uh, a song about a time machine, about uh, a feeling I'm sure all, all of us can relate to about just making some poor decisions and then wishing we could uh, go back and try, try that all over again. So this is a song about a fellow who uh, made some of those mistakes like that with his girl. And for Christmas, he's hoping he can turn it around. He's hoping Santa Claus can help him maybe get her back. Turn back time 
Coming out to this, stick around for the fiddle contest, and how about another round for Ernie for putting this together? And Thank you. Uh, please, please go to the website, and if you like it, ask for it to happen again, and we'll have a whole different panel sitting up here. I'm a traveling solo folk singer, so I don't get to play music with people as often as I'd like, so I'm going to make these guys play one with me here. Just take us home. How about it, everybody? Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for supporting the songs of John Hartford.
Chicago farmer, Cody Dockoff, Ryan Spearman, and my name's Ernie Hill, and, and I'm going to stand right here and raise this microphone up so I can talk about old-time fiddling and get set up for the old-time fiddling contests. And uh, Man, y'all stick around. You're going to hear some good fiddling.